Good morning. Uh, I'm joined here today, as you can see, by the Chief Medical Officer. Um, now, today's full COVID statistics will be published later on today, uh, so I'm not going to provide all of the detail of those right now. I can, though, confirm that the overall situation in Scotland does remain stable at this stage. Uh, we have, in recent days, been seeing cases declining slightly. Uh, we knew, however, that the weeks ahead would present real risks to this stability. Uh, colder weather forcing us indoors, festive socialising and a deteriorating situation in many countries across Europe. However, over the past few days, a new risk has emerged in the form of the Omicron variant, and it is that that we want to update you on today. I'm going to set out what we know so far about the new variant, though I stress there is still much that we and, of course, the rest of the world do not know about it. I'll also give the most up-to-date information we have on numbers of cases identified so far here in Scotland, though I expect this will be a developing situation in the days ahead. I will set out the actions we have considered it appropriate to take so far on a precautionary basis. And of course, I'll remind everyone what we can all do, uh, must do, in fact, to help contain the spread of the virus in general, but this new variant in particular. Uh, firstly, what do we know at this stage? And as I said a moment ago, the most important point to make which was underlined in a briefing issued by the World Health Organization last night, is that there is still a huge amount that we do not yet know about the variant. The number of mutations that it has and the nature of these, and some of the very early indications from Southern Africa, have raised the concern that this variant might be more transmissible than Delta, which of course is currently the dominant variant in Scotland and many other countries. However, much more data and analysis is required to be certain of this and if it is more transmissible to understand by how much. Further work is also needed to confirm what impact this variant might have on the effectiveness of vaccines and the risk of reinfection. The WHO said yesterday that preliminary evidence suggests there might be an increased risk of reinfection but stressed that information at this stage is still limited. It also said that there is currently no information to suggest that the symptoms for, from Omicron are any different to the symptoms from other variants. In other words, although again more data is still required, there is no evidence at this stage to suggest that the disease caused by Omicron is more severe. Now, the days and weeks ahead will tell all of us much more about the nature of this variant and therefore its implications, if there are implications, for our response to the pandemic. What we do know at this stage, though, confirms, in my view, that we should treat it seriously and that we should continue to act on a precautionary basis at this stage. While we all hope that the emerging understanding of it will reduce rather than increase our level of concern, there is no doubt that this presents potentially the most challenging development in the course of the pandemic for quite some time. Let me turn now to the situation in Scotland. We have stepped up our surveillance in recent days and I want to thank public health teams for the work they are doing to ensure that we are able to detect cases of this variant quickly. As we confirmed earlier today that enhanced surveillance has identified six cases of the Omicron variant in Scotland so far. Four of these are in Lanarkshire and two in Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Now, it's important for me to stress that the contact tracing of these cases is still ongoing. However, at this stage, we know that not all of them have any recent travel history to or known links with others who have travelled to the countries in Southern Africa where the variant was originally detected. This suggests that there might already be some community transmission of this variant in Scotland, but again, let me stress there is no evidence yet that this is sustained, nor any evidence from the enhanced surveillance that it is widespread at this stage. However, evidence of even limited community transmission underlines the importance of all of us increasing our compliance with the protections that are in place. And I'll turn now to the actions we have taken. We have already reintroduced some travel restrictions. Uh, even with evidence of community transmission locally, these travel uh, measures are important, and I'll say more about them shortly. 
But given that Omicron is already present in Scotland, we also need to consider carefully what steps are necessary and proportionate to reduce transmission here. Some protections that the UK Government has announced in recent days in relation to England, for example, the requirement to wear face coverings in some settings, are of course already in place and in fact more extensive already here in Scotland. So at this stage, we are asking people, everybody across the country, to significantly step up and increase compliance with all existing precautions. Face coverings, hygiene like washing hands and surfaces, getting vaccinated and of course testing yourselves regularly with lateral flow devices and uh, for from now on testing yourself before mixing socially with people from other households. Uh, we're also reminding people to work from home if possible. As of today, I'm asking employers to ensure that they are maximising the potential of home working. However, this may be uh, and is likely to be a fast moving situation, so our response will be kept under close review as we learn more about the risk Omicron poses and the nature of transmission here in Scotland. A key part of our initial response will be to continue to identify cases as quickly as we can and, where possible, after that break the chains of transmission. And to that end, additional testing will be undertaken in areas where cases have been identified. Now, our local response will complement the UK-wide travel restrictions that aim to avoid importing new cases while we're trying to curb community transmission. Even with cases already here, it is really important to do what we can to prevent new seeding of the variant from elsewhere. So in line with the rest of the UK, we have reinstated the red list of countries and to date 10 countries from Southern Africa have been added to that red list. Anybody travelling back to Scotland from those 10 countries must enter managed quarantine for 10 days on their arrival. In addition, anyone arriving in Scotland from anywhere outside the common travel area will be asked to take a PCR test on the second day after arrival and self-isolate until they get the result of that test. We know, however, that the incubation period for this virus is very often more than two days. So our view is that it would be sensible on a precautionary basis for these travel rules to be tightened further. That's a view shared uh, by the Welsh Government. I uh, had a call yesterday uh, with First Minister Mark Drakeford and he and I have written this morning uh, a joint letter to the Prime Minister. Uh, we're proposing a tougher Four Nations approach to travel restrictions at this stage that would see people arriving in the UK from overseas asked to self-isolate for eight days. Under our proposal, they would take a PCR test on day eight of their arrival as well as on day two. We believe this measure would be more effective in identifying cases of this variant uh, which result from overseas travel and therefore help us prevent further community transmission from imported cases. Now, as we know from earlier stages of the pandemic, with so many people travelling to Scotland and indeed to Wales via airports in England, anything less than a Four Nations approach to requirements like this will be ineffective. So we hope that a Four Nations agreement can be reached. A Four Nations approach obviously requires the Four Nations to discuss these issues together and hear the best advice available. Uh, so Mark Drakeford and I have also called on the Prime Minister uh, today to immediately convene a COBRA meeting uh, with representation from each nation to discuss what additional steps we might have to consider and how we work together to tackle uh, this new risk. Uh, Mark Drakeford and I are also conscious of the very real concern businesses and staff will feel at the possibility of further protections becoming necessary. Uh, now, let me stress, we all hope this will not be necessary, but it is prudent to plan ahead. And so we have also sought confirmation that should any further protections be necessary, Treasury funding will be available to any of the four nations that require to activate business support schemes. Now, given the serious tone and content of my statement today, um, I want to stress this. It is always important, and we've learned this over these past two years, in the face of new developments in this virus, to prepare for the worst, to act on a precautionary basis. But that uh, does not mean uh, that we are not hoping, because we are hoping for something considerably short of the worst. We are still hoping for the best uh, and hoping that our developing understanding of this vi variant will reduce rather than increase our concern. Uh, I very much hope that additional protections can be avoided. 
And while we will act on a precautionary basis, we will also seek to act at all times in a proportionate manner. Uh, I want to end by stressing uh, what we can all do. Uh, vaccination remains our most important line of defence. Uh, we had already outlined last week that the Scottish Government was working to accelerate even further the booster vaccine programme. We will now step up those efforts uh, even more. Uh, we are expecting a statement later today from the JCVI confirming its updated advice on vaccination. The Scottish Government is getting ready to operationalise any new recommendations from the JCVI, for example, in relation to the interval between second doses and boosters, or the range of people who can now receive uh, booster jags. And we will do that as quickly as is possible. Vaccines do remain our best line of defence, and I want to stress at this point, if, and it is still an if, vaccines do prove to be less effective against this new variant, vaccination will still be hugely important. Less effective does not mean ineffective. If anything, the new variant makes it more important, not less important, to get all doses of the vaccine. Over the weekend, 40 to 49 year olds became able to book boosters through NHS Inform. Older age groups can already do so. So if you're 40 or over, go to the website, book a booster uh, for when you are due it. And if you haven't yet had your first or second doses, please book an appointment to get them now. The Scottish Government will uh, consider carefully in the coming days any further actions that are necessary as we get more information about this variant and the extent of its presence here. Uh, but the point I want to end on, and indeed stress at this stage, is that the same measures that have worked against previous strains of this virus will also help us curb any transmission of this new variant. So if in recent weeks you've been sticking a bit less rigorously to all of the public health advice, which I think is entirely understandable, and I'm sure we are all in that position to a greater or lesser extent. Now is the time to start following all of that advice rigorously again. Every one of us can make a difference in protecting ourselves and each other. So let me just end with a reminder of what all of us can do and what it is really important that all of us do at do at this stage. Uh, these steps are now vital, so I'm asking everybody not to see this as optional. Uh, firstly, get vaccinated. It is the single most important thing we can do to protect ourselves and each other. Uh, secondly, test for COVID regularly. As I said, we will be increasing testing in areas where the new variant has been identified. But for all of us, wherever we are, even if we're feeling fine, regular lateral flow testing is a really important way of finding out if we might have the virus. So on any occasion that you're intending to socialise or mix with people from other households, whether that's in a pub, a restaurant, a house, or even a shopping centre, please do an LFD test. You can get kits online or pick them up from local pharmacies or test centres. They are free, so get as many as you need and keep your supply topped up. And finally, comply with all of the existing protections. Wear face coverings on public transport, in shops, and whenever you're moving about in hospitality settings. Keep windows open if you have people in your house uh, to improve ventilation, because we know that helps. Follow all of the advice on hygiene. It's time to go back rigorously to washing our hands, to cleaning surfaces. And as I said earlier, please work from home right now if you can. Uh, the Economy Secretary will be meeting business organisations later this afternoon and stressing that home working, when possible, will help us get through the winter and also this latest risk more safely. The discovery of this new variant makes these measures more important than ever before. Uh, they will make a difference and by sticking to them, we will give ourselves the best possible chance of enjoying the more normal Christmas we are all looking forward to, but enjoying not just a more normal Christmas, but a safer Christmas too. And hopefully of avoiding the need for any tighter protections in the weeks to come. Uh, so please let all of us uh, make sure that we up our compliance right now. This of course is a concerning development, but if we take it as a reminder not to let our guard slip, then I hope we can protect the stronger position that we had already got ourselves uh, into. So please get vaccinated, test yourself regularly and follow all of the protections that are in place. Thank you uh, to everybody for doing all of these things and for what I know everybody will be seeking to do in the weeks ahead. 
I'm going to uh, move now to questions. I'm sure there will be a number of questions today um, about uh, both the new variant generally, but the situation in particular. And I'm going to uh, call on the Chief Medical Officer to uh, answer uh, many of these questions. He'll be able to give a bit more information on what we know about the variant, but also, of course, the surveillance exercise that is underway right now in Scotland. Uh, I'll go first to Katie Hunter from the BBC. Um, morning, everyone. I was wondering if you could give us some extra information on the additional testing you mentioned there. Will that be kind of PCR testing for everyone or is it lateral flow testing? And also, do you know if um, any of the cases identified are linked to COP? Uh, thanks, Katie. I'll pass over to Gregor in a second. I'll, I'll be very brief. We have no information right now that any of these cases are related to COP. Uh, however, as I said in my opening statement, the contact tracing is ongoing, so nor can I stand here and give you a 100% uh, guarantee that that is not the case. Um, I think, though, if you uh, consider the timelines of COP, it is not impossible, uh, but it's perhaps also not probable that there are connections to COP. COP ended, I think, on the 12th of November. Had we had this variant circulating undetected in Scotland from back then, I think our surveillance uh, efforts right now may be showing uh, more cases and more widespread community transmission. So that's not a definitive answer, uh, but it is, I think, uh, uh, an assumption that we can make based on what we know right now. And if that changes, of course, we will update that uh, information. In terms of the additional testing, health boards will work to ensure that that is appropriate to the circumstances uh, that they're faced with uh, around these new cases. So, and in terms of additional testing, obviously there will be a focus on PCR testing because it is a, a quicker way to try uh, to identify the new variant um, through this S gene dropout, which is not conclusive of the new variant, but highly indicative of it. Uh, initially, there will be testing of close contacts of cases uh, who are also, of course, been asked to isolate. But depending on the contact tracing, uh, that testing will go further into uh, networks of the cases, but also in some cases, uh, the, the geographic areas that cases are being identified in. But as is always the case, local public health teams are best placed to decide exactly on a tactical and targeted basis how to make uh, use of that. Final point I would make is if you have any symptoms at all, go and get a PCR test no matter where in the country you live and do regular LFD testing, uh, even if you feel fine. And as I said, before you go and mix with anybody else, because that means if you are asymptomatic but infected with this virus, you've got a chance of picking it up um, and stopping the transmission before it happens. Gregor. Katie, if you, can, if you cast your mind back to this time last year when Alpha variant was beginning to emerge in this country, one of the peculiar quirks of that virus was it showed what we called S gene dropout. So this was a particular appearance on testing that allowed us to readily identified just through PCR. And then Delta came along and we lost that ability because Delta showed S gene positivity. With this new variant, Omicron, one of the features that we're seeing with that just now is we're once again seeing S gene dropout on PCR testing. Now that's important because it gives us a little bit of an advantage more quickly than genomic sequencing to have a high index of suspicion that a positive case that's showing S gene dropout or S gene target failure could be Omicron. And that allows us to target both our public health response, but also prioritise these samples for genomic sequencing as well. So that is one of the quirks of this particular variant that we can use to our advantage. And what we can also do is we can use a look back exercise to see whether we are seeing any unusual patterns of S gene dropout appearing across the Scottish positive cases over recent times. Now, we've done that exercise just now, and looking back over the, to the 16th of November, we're starting to see some S gene dropout cases beginning to appear again. Now, it's really important. We've seen S gene dropout cases all, even when Delta was dominant. We still get sporadic cases of S gene dropout, but what it allows us to do is to target these particular cases to get more information to allow us to determine whether these may or may not represent Omicron cases. It allows us to engage with those people, to ask them to retest, and I urge people, if you're contacted by health protection teams uh, and suggested that retesting, that, that, that you undertake that, and also prioritise any of those samples for onward genomic sequencing. It's the best 
method that we have, we've been able to identify cases at this moment in time. And the cases that we've identified so far have been identified through that process just now by targeting those cases looking for S gene target failure or S gene dropout. Now, at this moment in time, we don't have any evidence at all that these are related to COP26 or any links back to that at all. But we'll continue to do the work through, we'll continue to do the enhanced contact tracing and make sure that we identify and isolate and retest anyone who's showing this particular feature. And that loop back exercise that Gregor has spoken about has led to the identification of these cases and our view that there may be limited community transmission already underway in Scotland, but it has also given us some assurance that that community transmission is not widespread at this stage and may not yet be sustained. So it's allowing us uh, to uh, learn in, in both directions uh, and it's very helpful in, in that regard. Uh, James Matthews from Sky. Uh, thanks, Forest Minister. Um, can I ask, uh, you said that you know you want to avoid additional precautions, uh, but people were thinking about Christmas, big travel plans, big gatherings. What would you say to them uh, in that regard? Should they put plans on hold? And can I ask you, Gregor, um, do we know if anybody's died after contracting the Omicron strain? And when do you think roughly we will know how virulent it is, how dangerous it is. Are we talking a couple of weeks, three weeks before Christmas? Uh, firstly, I'm not asking MD today to put plans on hold. Um, I will, uh, during this next phase of uh, the pandemic, if this proves necessary, as we learn more over the days, I'll do what I've done at previous stages. I'll stand here and try to share with you in a, a real-time uh, basis what we're asking people to do and why. Right now, what I'm asking people to do is really up the level of compliance with all of the protections that are still in place. And I think it's really important uh, that we see these for what they are, which are protections, not restrictions. So wearing a face covering will help prevent the transmission of any variant of this virus. Washing your hands and surfaces will do that as well. Although we're not legally uh, requiring this, just be mindful of distance between you and people from other households, people you don't know, for example, when you're out and about, keeping your windows open in, in your house, particularly if you have people around, testing yourself regularly to make sure that you're not inadvertently going somewhere with the virus when you don't have symptoms, and of course, getting vaccinated. Getting vaccinated is the single most important thing we're asking everybody to do. So right now, we've all slipped up on these things as our assessment of the risk of this virus has perhaps receded in recent weeks. It is now time to step up on all of this. And if we all do that, we maximise our chances of limiting this while we learn more about it without the need for any further protection. So that is my message, plea, request, call it what you want to everybody across the country. To those watching, please tell people you know who are not watching. This is a moment again for collective national vigilance and compliance with these protections to try to keep all of us as safe as possible. James, I'll try and answer your questions as fully as I can just now, but I think you'll probably appreciate that at this moment in time, there's a lot to learn about the, the new variant Omicron. Um, and, and that is unfortunately going to take us some time to get on top of that. The first um, genomic sequences of this new variant were only uploaded to GISAID, which is the international database, on the 24th of November. So we're still at the very, very early stages of understanding much about this. Like any new variant that comes along, there's probably three particular things that we want to try to learn more about. First of all, is it more transmissible? Secondly, does it show any properties that could lead to immune evasion? either through vaccine or previous exposures to the virus? And thirdly, does it cause any change in the disease severity? So that's what scientists will be particularly focusing upon just now. Those three areas, um, using a variety of techniques to try and gain further information on that. Some of that will be about data in the real world, which will take time to collect. Some of that will be about lab-based testing as well. And we can, now that we have identified um, some cases in the UK that will allow us to retrieve viral material that we can then subject to these lab-based tests as well. And all that, will, as I say, will already be underway at this moment in time. But it will be several weeks before we begin to get 
clear, confident answers to these questions that you're posing just now. At this moment in time, we're certainly not aware of anyone globally who has died as a consequence of coming into contact with this virus. But I, I have to stress, James, that this is the very early stages of our understanding and it will increase really quite markedly over the, even just the coming days. Matthew Sutton from ITV Border. Thank you. Um, do you have any idea how this strain affects children? And with lots of events coming up, like meetings with Santa and things, would you have any advice for parents or, you know, should they be concerned about ch uh, taking their children along? And can I also ask as well, there's thousands of homes still without power in the Scottish borders um, and the council have advised people to find alternative accommodation with family and friends where they need to. Uh, are you concerned that the current weather emergency that we're facing could enable further spread within the community of the new strain? Thanks very much. I'm going to pass to Gregor um, on your question about anything that we know right now about uh, the, the impact of this variant on children. Um, can I say generally though, and it, it um, is a, a response to your question, but may be relevant to others as well. If I'm going to ask people to change anything that they are currently doing, I will say so explicitly. Um, so I'm not asking people uh, not to do things that they are currently being told it's okay to do, but I am asking people to comply very strictly with all of the protections around these things. Now, if that changes in the days to come, we will set that out uh, clearly, and that's uh, an important commitment to give. Um, on your very um, important point about weather, uh, disruption. Uh, there are uh, large numbers of people um, in the borders elsewhere in Scotland still without access to power. The uh, scale of the damage uh, that was done by uh, the high winds and weather disruption uh, in recent days has been significant and therefore it is taking power companies longer than anybody would want to restore uh, households uh, to power. Uh, we are, the Scottish Government's uh, Resilience Committee is uh, obviously engaged here. The Deputy First Minister chaired uh, a meeting of that yesterday and we are very mindful of supporting people, of welfare provisions and of course supporting any efforts to get people reconnected as quickly as possible. Um, my general uh, message to people, and I know it's even more difficult if you're disrupted and not able to stay in your own home and not have power, but again, just be mindful of all of the, the risks of COVID generally and in particular to this new variant. Uh, but I can assure people uh, that efforts are underway to get people reconnected to power as quickly as possible. Uh, and Gregor. Well, actually, one of the features of all the forms of the virus uh, that we've seen so far is that there's been a very definite age gradient in terms of the severity of impact. So older people, people with more vulnerabilities have tended to fare worse when they've been infected by the virus. And as you go down the age groups to the younger age groups, the severe effects are much less frequent. There's nothing to suggest with this particular virus that, or this variant of the virus that that has changed anything at all. None of the data which has um, certainly been uh, identified at this moment in time would suggest that there's any change in that. Of course, we need to come continue to monitor all of that, but there's certainly no uh, evidence of any change and nothing to suspect from the mutations in the virus that it would lead to any change either. from STV. Uh, good morning. Um, just in terms of Treasury funding, uh, which you've written for, if you're given that assurance by Westminster, will that give you the confidence you need to perhaps bring in more restrictions and protections, uh, even perhaps on a circuit breaker basis ahead of Christmas? I, th I think it's important to get this round the, the right way. It's not a case of, you know, if, if we get an assurance about money, we're going to go and do restrictions. I, I don't want to impose any restrictions. I don't want to have to introduce any more protections. And I really hope we don't have to do that. It is about making sure that we have the assurance that should that prove necessary, we are not stopped from doing what is necessary in a public health sense by the lack of uh, financial support. Um, so that's the way round I, I would see this. If we get an assurance around uh, what Mark Drakeford and I are asking for today, I still hope we will never have to activate that because the public health circumstances will uh, ensure that additional protections are not necessary. Gina Davidson from LBC. Hi, good morning, uh, First Minister. Can I ask how the people people are that have this variant? Do you know? If, are they well? Are they in hospital? Do you know it at all? And also, can I ask, given that you've written uh, with Mark Drakeford, does that, are we to assume from that that there's been no communication the other way from the UK government 
how to handle this new variant. Uh, sorry, Gina, your line was breaking up there, so I, I think I got uh, your questions, but if I'm answering questions that you didn't ask, then my apologies, that's the, the reason for it. Um, on the condition, I'm, I'm not, with six cases, obviously, you know, patient confidentiality is really important. I'm not going to go into any more details about the individuals. They are all in isolation. I, as far as I'm aware, none of them are in hospital. Um, but, you know, obviously with anybody with this virus, uh, you know, we don't know what... Uh, direction it will take. Um, on the, there has been a discussion between four nations at an official uh, level. Uh, I took part on uh, Saturday, um, my days are all running into one again, uh, Saturday afternoon on a four nations call with Michael Gove and the, the first ministers of uh, myself, Wales and Northern Ireland. So there has been four nations uh, discussions and these are helpful and I certainly hope these will continue. But I think given uh, what we are facing right now, or the potential of what we are facing, um, a, a full COBRA meeting, which will allow all of us to talk uh, with advisors to to you know, make sure we are sharing the same information and address some of these points that Mark and I have raised in our letter would be appropriate right now. And I'm sure the Prime Minister is already thinking of that, but I think a, a COBRA meeting in the early part of this week would, in the circumstances we're in, be really appropriate. And I suspect people might... Uh, raise an eyebrow if that wasn't to happen. Uh, Dan Barker from PA. Hello, uh, good after, uh, good morning. It's like, uh, earlier than I thought. Um, how uh, confident are you in um, these measures stopping this new variant, or is it just a matter of it sort of you trying to contain it now? Is it is it just too late? And sort of on that, if the strain expands, could vaccine certification be back on the cards? We've got to keep our minds open to everything that might help. But me saying that is not me saying, you know, X intervention is definitely going to happen or Y intervention is definitely not going to happen. All along, and people, it's a while since I've stood here and uh, like everybody watching, I'm, I'm not full of, of the joy of being back here talking about all of this. But if you cast your mind back, I've always tried to, to say that I think it's foolish to rule things out categorically when we're trying to deal with a virus. Um, and equally, um, it's sensible to keep our minds open. Um, in terms of how confident am I, I'm confident that the measures we're asking everybody to comply with right now have a downward uh, push on transmission. We don't know yet what the transmissibility of this new variant is, so we can't say for certain that the current protections in place will be sufficient against it, uh, but we do know they'll have an impact. So keep doing these things, and if we all step up that compliance, I think we've got a greater chance of keeping a downward pressure on this, obviously, than we would if we didn't do all of that. And again, a really important point is vaccination. You know, this time last year, as we were about to uh, have the alpha variant detected, which was more transmissible than what had gone before, and then, of course, later came Delta. But this time last year, we didn't have vaccination. Um, we're in a much stronger position. And even if, and it's still a big if, the scientists conclude that the vaccines are less effective against this new variant, that is not the same as saying they are ineffective. Vaccines are still going to give you more protection than you would have without the vaccine, so it's really important to get vaccinated. And right now, I think all we can do is just make sure we're doing all of the things we know can make a difference, and hopefully uh, we'll find that they make sufficient difference in the, the days to come. Dan, I want to pick up on that point that the First Minister has made there about vaccination just now. And I think it's really, really important. And there are still many people across the country just now who haven't even begun their vaccination doses at all, haven't even had their first dose. My, my plea to them is to reconsider, is to make sure that you are getting the protection that you're likely to require um, over this next period, that you're going, you're getting your primary programme. And if you're due for your booster when you become eligible to make sure that you're booking your appointment and you're taking up that offer of a booster as well. We know from the evidence that's been developed that the booster program, that the booster dose in particular gives a significant rise in the antibody response in the body. I know at this stage, as yet, we don't know just to what degree, if any, there's going to be immune escape with this particular variant. Boosting that antibody response making sure that also the, the response that lies behind that in what we call the T-cells has um, an extra kind of primer dose as well. 
that is going to give you the best opportunity of making sure that you're protecting yourself against any eventuality that may follow. So my, my, my words to everyone are, please don't ignore this. If you've not had your primary course, get your primary course. If you do your booster, go for your booster, please. Thanks. Uh, Seb Carroll from The Guardian. Seb, are you there? Okay, I'm going to sorry, go... Sorry, First Minister. Oh, sorry, you're uh, there. My apologies. Sorry, I, all my questions have been asked. Thank you. Thanks very much, Seb. Appreciate that. Grateful. Um, sorry. Michael Blackley from The Mail. Thank you. Good morning. Um, you want a tougher approach on international travel. Um, what, what would you say to people that have maybe booked holidays for December, January? Should they be trying to cancel those... Um, and it should should anybody actually be going ahead with making new bookings at this stage, or do you do you think it would be preferable to not do that while things are still fairly uncertain? Um, and just on the boosters as well, um, if there is advice to uh, allow boosters to take place five months after a second dose, do you actually have the facilities in place to allow that to happen quickly? Thank you. Um, on the first point, I'm not, as I said earlier, I'm not asking people to cancel plans that they have. If, if that changes, I will say it, you know, straight to people. But everybody, and this has been the case all along, but we've perhaps, because things have been better, we've uh, got out of the way of this. If you're making plans, you have to be aware of the context that we are in just now and that we might be in over the next few weeks. And that's not just about the the travel the approach to travel that will be taken in the uk i just and if i'm getting this wrong because i just glanced at it before i came in here today i think japan has just closed its borders so other countries are taking decisions about trying to restrict a uh, possible entry of this variant in, into to their own territories so you just have to be aware of that that right now and this has been the case throughout the pandemic the conditions either here or in the country you might be traveling to that are in place when you book your trip might not be the same conditions when you go to travel and you know people just have to be aware of that and i can't i can't make judgments for everybody in terms of what that means for decisions that are made but in coming to those judgments yourself it stands to reason you have to be aware that again unfortunately we are in an unpredictable phase of this pandemic where things may be changing a bit more regularly than has been the case in recent months. In terms of the um, question about the booster campaign, as I say, we're expecting the JCVI statement later today. We have some indication, uh, but it's for the JCVI to set out the recommendation of the direction that these recommendations are likely to go in. So over the weekend, uh, we have already been starting to consider the operational uh, aspects of that uh, we are already you know going very very you know fast in the booster program or the the most vaccinated part of the uk we're already trying to step that up so not everybody is going to get vaccinated on you know one day after advice changes i think we we know that from previous uh, phases of the vaccination program but we will be operationalizing this as quickly as we can to get through all of the groups that are recommended for the booster as quickly as is feasible. Uh, Vivian Aitken from The Record. Good morning, First Minister. Um, just a couple of brief things. Um, can you tell us how many of the six people with this new strain have been double vaccinated? And <clears throat> I know you said that you don't know if there's any link to COP26, but do we know if any of the COP26 delegates from the newly travel-restricted countries have tested positive for Omicron yet? Um, I can't give you the vaccine uh, status of the six cases. I said earlier on, uh, the, the contact tracing, the information gathering around these cases is still ongoing. Uh, we have announced these quickly because I think public interest uh, says that that is, is right. These cases are in isolation. Uh, their uh, close contacts have been asked to isolate as well. And now there is a process of gathering the information so that we can you know, take any relevant factors, but also so that the contact tracing teams can draw any lines between the different connections there. So that process is already underway. Um, there's no reason to uh, suspect any uh, link between these cases and COP. As I said 
in, I think, in response to the first question, though, that is not the same as me saying I can definitively rule it out right now. Um, the timelines for COP, we are now, what, three weeks away from uh, the end of COP, uh, and we all know the sort of broad timelines in which this virus incubates and, and then uh, proceeds. In terms of the uh, issue with people who attended COP, uh, I have no information on any of them testing positive for this variant, but there is going to be a lot of work underway, not just here in Scotland, but in all countries, to try to get as much uh, information about how long this variant has been with us and, and where it might have been spreading. So these are uh, answers to the questions that I have right now, but they are answers that may change as our information and understanding develops in the days to come. But I don't know if you want to say more, Gregor. Yeah, I'd be delighted to say more just now, particularly about... Uh, I, Vivian, I understand that there will be a lot of interest in the cases that we've announced today, but I think it's really, really important also that we respect the, the confidentiality that these people are entitled to as well and that, that that's something that is very conscious on our minds just now in relation to cop 26 um i've asked at the moment there's, there's, there's no evidence at all of any kind of links back to cop 26 i must emphasize that but i have asked public health scotland to um, look especially for any evidence of the single gene dropout positive cases that, that uh, I spoke about earlier, just to see whether there is um, anything at all which would be unusual. Um, at this moment in time, we're not detecting anything like that, but that process is ongoing. Thanks. Simon Johnson from The Telegraph. Thank you, First Minister. A um, couple of things. Can I check how many of these six cases are known to each other? Um, secondly, can you just explain the thinking about the travel restrictions? Because we've had a kind of traffic light system based on risk and so why should people from countries without this variant yet without maybe they've got fewer cases than scotland why should they have to self-isolate and lastly um you said several times that people shouldn't be changing their christmas plans yet but it is three weeks on saturday's christmas day and i just wondered whether people should be making contingency plans just in case plan a isn't possible thank you I'm not asking people to change their plans. Um, I know it's three weeks to Christmas and none of us, uh, including me, wanted to be in a position uh, where I'm standing here again talking about a new variant that is posing risks. Uh, if any of our advice changes, it's important that we do that in a proper way and we communicate it in a proper way. Individuals, uh, human beings, will factor in uh, contingencies to all sorts of plans they make and I'm sure there will be many thinking about, you know, if X happens, what would I do? instead of what I'm planning to do. I can't make that decision for every uh, individual uh, across the country, as my family would tell me. I'm not always that good at making it for my, making these kind of decisions for my own family, so I'm not going to try and do it for everybody else. What I am going to try to do is tell you as much as we know about what we're learning about this uh, variant and to tell you as and when and if, because it is an if just now, that changes any of the advice that we are giving so that the decisions people are making can be made in the most informed uh, way possible. And I think that's the only way really to proceed right now. I, standing here right now, I still hope, really fervently hope to be having a normal Christmas with my family. Can I say that in a 100% sense? No, but that's what I hope. And that's what I think we should all be hopeful of as we learn more about this variant. In terms of travel, it, the reason why, if you go back to when we previously had the PCR isolation requirement for people coming into the country, it was test on day two and then day eight. Now, the reason for that in a public health sense is the incubation period of, of the virus. If you happen to get this virus just before you get on a plane, uh, two days later, you may not yet be showing it in a test. And why would we have... The, the problem is we don't yet know where this variant is. So we can't say for certain there are countries literally every hour right now detecting cases of it. This time yesterday, we didn't know we had it in Scotland. Now we do. So the reason at an early stage of a new virus or a new variant of the virus for being quite broad based in your protective approaches rather than targeted as you might be able to become later is that none of us know where this variant is. And so we can't say for certain that country X doesn't have it. And that's why you need broader base protections at this stage. And you will see 
do see right now many different countries arriving at those judgments. Hopefully that won't be required for long as our understanding and knowledge of this develops. But that kind of approach right now, I think, is an important protection to, as we try to contain community transmission here, we're not compounding that challenge for ourselves by having more of the, the variant coming into the country. Do you want to add anything? Simon, to give you an example of the, the kind of learning that we, we need just now, why this is also important, you know, at, at this moment in time, we don't know whether the proportion of people who might be asymptomatic during the infectious period has changed at all with this new virus. So it's right that taking a cautious approach and just making sure that we are all just strengthening those protections that we should be using on a day to day basis just gives us that little bit of extra additional confidence that we're reducing the risk. One of the things I would encourage people, particularly at this point in time of the year, to be doing as much as they possibly can is getting into the habit of regular lateral flow testing. It's really simple now to do. The, the, kind of, the new kits that we use just need a nasal sample. You know, you, you can get a result back from that within 20 to 30 minutes. It gives you much greater degree of confidence that if you're going out into a social setting, if you're mixing with others, that you're not going to be responsible for passing any kind of infection onto another person because you've been asymptomatic. And we've got to remember as well that, you know, on a daily basis just now, we're still announcing between two and two and a half thousand cases of the Delta variant every day. Now that still has the potential to cause harm. And that's why I'm saying to you just now that, that actually all these protections are just as important. And in fact, enhancing our approach to them is doubly important to make sure that as we approach this festive period, we're, we're not gonna risk passing the virus on to other people. That is such an important point that Gregor's just made. Uh, it's really important that we focus on these six cases of Omicron because we're learning more about it. But don't let our focus on the six cases of this new variant blind us to the two and a half thousand cases a day of Delta. So all of these measures are important to reduce the risk of that. And they will also help reduce the risk of, of Omicron. Mark McLaughlin from the Times. Come back to you because um, the first question I asked was do, uh, were the six cases known to each other? Oh, sorry, uh, we, we don't have full enough information. The contact tracing is ongoing and it would not be helpful for me to uh, give you a partial uh, picture of that. Uh, Mark McLaughlin from the Times. Good morning, First Minister. Um, firstly, is, is there any um, suggestion of a link to the South Africa game, Scotland, the South Africa rugby? couple of weeks ago and the Omicron strain. Secondly, a couple of weeks ago, the Times spoke to a number of employers who were seeking proof of vaccination as a condition of employment, uh, mainly care homes, but also a care home seeking labourers um, to work in a live care home. Uh, can you confirm that these people are leaving themselves open to prosecution if they do that? And, and is that the right balance? Um, I, I, I'll come back to you on that last point. It's not for me to say whether people should be prosecuted or not. We have uh, we don't have compulsory vaccination, but we strongly recommend vaccination and we have COVID certification in place for certain settings. Uh, I've been clear all along, you know, whatever we might or might not do in future in terms of extending COVID uh, certification. And obviously we decided not to do that last week. Uh, we will not uh, favour uh, COVID certification for access to public services. Um, so without more detail of uh, what you're talking about. I'm not going to, to go further on that. I have no uh, evidence to suggest that there are links to the South Africa rugby match, but I'll make the point I have now made on several occasions, the contact tracing of these cases is still ongoing. So the fact that I don't have evidence of it right now doesn't mean that I can definitively say there is no link, uh, but I'm not aware of anything that suggests that at this stage. One of the points that I would want to emphasise and to speak directly to colleagues in health and social care professions is to, um, at this point in time, if you have not taken up the offer of your booster uh, vaccine, is to make sure that you are now ensuring that you're protected with that booster dose. Just now, we're still uh, in the process of making sure that this is an ongoing process across Scotland just now. But as I say, um, I would encourage all my colleagues to make sure that if you're el eligible now for a booster uh, dose, is that you're taking up that offer. It's protect you, it'll protect your families, and just as importantly, it'll protect the patients that you're looking after as well. And uptake amongst health and social care staff has been high. So, you know, let's thank those who've come forward and encourage those who have yet to do so uh, to make sure they do. Uh, Richard Percival from The Express. 
Uh, thank you very much, First Minister. Um, just two quick questions, if I may. Um, if other people are, say, travelling around the UK for Christmas from other parts of the UK, would you encourage them to take collateral flow tests before they travel, say, like cross-border travel? And secondly, if, if you have, a, um, if these new cases are, you would say, in clusters, would you consider imposing like regional restrictions on Glasgow or Edinburgh rather than do it nationwide, like a level system? Thanks. We are not considering regional travel restrictions right now, uh, but. You know, it's really important to understand, and I think people do understand because we've been living with this for two years, that because I say we're not considering something now doesn't mean I can rule it out forever. But I don't, I don't want to be in the realms of considering any of these things. I think we know how difficult regional travel restrictions were uh, last year, or in fact, I think some were still in place in the early part of this year. Uh, so we don't want that to be the case, and that is not under consideration uh, right now. In, in relation to your first question, yes, I'm asking people to take a lateral flow test wherever they go, whenever they go anywhere uh, that is involving mixing with people outside their own household. So if you're going to a pub, if you're going to a restaurant, if you're visiting somebody else's house, whether you're going round the corner to do that or travelling to another part of the country to do that, even if you're going Christmas shopping into shops or shopping centres where there will be other people around, test before you go. If your LFD shows positive, don't go because then you're not risking passing it on. Instead, do what we are, advise people to do, get a confirmatory PCR test and isolate until you get the result of the PCR test. If, if you think about it, if we all do that, then we're going to have a massive uh, downward impact on transmission because we'll be cutting off so many opportunities for the virus to spread. So that's a really, really important piece of advice that we are giving everybody. Uh, Derek Keeley from The Courier. Thanks, Mr. Minister. Um, I know you've said we're hearing back to the JCDI today. Um, Debbie Schroeder's talked about how she would like to see five to 11 euros being offered a uh, vaccine as soon as possible. Is that something we could hear more about this afternoon, potentially? Um, and for Gregor, how difficult, do you have any idea of how difficult it would be to develop um, a new vaccine if current ones aren't as effective with this new variant? Um, is it likely to be a case of just tweaking it or would it be a lot more complex? Um, look, look, on the first part of your question, it's not for me to preempt what the JCVI will say this afternoon. Um, and my view as a politician, but that should immediately be a caveat that I'm a politician, not a clinician. I want to get the vaccine to as many people as I possibly can. So in that respect, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of with DV on the, the sentiments of what she is saying there. Obviously, we have to make sure the vaccines are approved. And then politicians like me have to follow clinical advice on who is and isn't appropriate to receive a vaccine. So we will wait and see what the JCVI uh, have to say later. Derek, at this point in time, it'd be premature for me to say how easy or not it would be to, to kind of tweak or change the vaccines for this particular variant Omicron, partly because of the extent of the mutations that um, we know exist in the spike protein in particular. There's over 30 mutations uh, which are apparent there. Now, teams are already working to look at the existing vaccines uh, on the field, um, particularly in the regions where we've associated, where we've identified a number of these cases, to see what the vaccine effect is on the current vaccines, and it's yet to be determined whether we need to tweak those vaccines to any extent um, in order that we um, continue to to use vaccination as one of the main methods of combating the virus. But the rest assured, one of the features of many of the virus of the vaccine formulations that we now use is that they're readily able to be changed in preparation for what we expect to be an ever-changing virus. We know that viruses evolve over time and so one of the features of the approaches that have been taken to manufacturing these viruses is that we're able to change them and evolve them just as we do with flu every year so that they face the particular dominant strains at that point in time. Thanks. Uh, Chris Mawson from The Sun. Um, just to CMO, on what date did the PCR test take place for our earliest identified Omicron case? And uh, on COP26, were all of the cases that were confirmed by PCR at COP then sequenced? And just to the First Minister, um, your announcement here that you're asking the UK government to offer travel restrictions, it's already, you'll be unsurprised to hear, drawn some criticism from your rivals for being, quote, megaphone diplomacy. Uh, did you make the announcement in this way because the UK government is reluctant to do what you want on travel? I'm making the announcement because Mark Drakeford and I agreed to do this and I think it's quite urgent that we take these steps. Um, I 
think what's really important right now is that we do what's appropriate and um, you know I hope we get an agreement around this and I will leave that there. Um, in terms of the uh, PCR test I'll, I'll let Gregor answer the, the questions about that but it's not uh, the, the thing as he if you were listening to him earlier on uh, said we have a, a factor of the PCR test as we did with the alpha variant that allows us to uh, detect whether this variant might be uh, the, the, the strain in cases through the S gene dropout. So cases, uh, we don't have to wait for genomic sequencing, although genomic sequencing will be done. Uh, we have an indication uh, from the PCR test uh, that uh, that is the case. I'm not sure Gregor will be able to give you the information about dates because, as I keep saying, the process of uh, contact tracing and understanding exactly the, the journey these cases have been taken uh, is underway, but I'll let him answer that. So, Chris, the, the, the earliest indication that we have at this moment in time, and I stress at this moment in time, is that for a positive PCR test in relation to this, um, a confirmed case is the 23rd of November. But, um, as I say, that process is ongoing uh, just now. And in relation to COP26, uh, there was an extensive programme of PCR testing and um, whole genomic sequencing of any positive cases thereafter and clearly there is a very close scrutiny of all that work just now just to make sure that there is no evidence of any kind of links at that stage. At this moment in time again I can say to you um, that there's no evidence of that from any of the, the, the work that's been done so far. Elsa uh, Nishman from the Scotsman. Sorry can I just clarify on that? It sounded like it from what you said there um, uh, Dr Smith but the what was a sequencing take place on every single one of the confirmed COP cases or not? I, I, I can't give you the exact proportion with, with the data just now, Chris, but, but we can get back to you on that. Elsa Nishman from Scotland. Thanks, uh, First Minister. Um, just firstly, what are you going to do if the UK government doesn't agree to more travel restrictions? Um, will you depart from the Four Nation approach or take in measures at the England-Scotland border, for example? Um, and secondly, just on the NHS, we know it's under a lot of pressure at the moment and the Health Secretary has said perhaps more so than at any point during the pandemic and we're heading into winter now. Um, you made the point about being in a stronger position because of the vaccines. How concerned are you that the NHS has less capacity to cope with any extra pressure um, than it has done at previous points during the pandemic? I'm obviously very concerned about that because it is a fact, um, but that underlines the the necessity of us doing everything that we can to keep the virus generally under control, but this new variant in particular, and that comes back to all of the measures that we're asking people to take. Um, look, I'm, I'm hoping we can get a Four Nations agreement, not just on this, but in future on travel restrictions, because we know from travel patterns that that is the only thing that will be uh, properly effective, but we'll uh, continue to uh, wait and see what the response to that is, and, and hopefully uh, we'll have some positive discussions. Helen McArdle from the Herald. Hi, I was just wondering if you could say, um, do you know if you're using this kind of S gene dropout surveillance to try and pinpoint the cases, do you know um, at the moment how many um, S gene dropout cases um, we're, we're looking at for um, sequencing or that are going forward for sequencing at the moment? Um, I'll pass on to Gregor. What we know from recent uh, months, I think, is that S gene dropout cases have been very few and far between because the alpha uh, variant, which shows this S gene dropout, has pretty much disappeared. Uh, you know, there are sporadic cases of it, but it, it has been completely replaced, almost completely com replaced by Delta, which doesn't show the S gene dropout. So any appearance again of S gene dropout cases, and uh, you know, we're not seeing hundreds and hundreds of these uh, at the moment, uh, but any appearance of those is not conclusive proof that it is Omicron, but it would raise a suspicion uh, that it might be Omicron because the other uh, variant that has been causing that has really almost disappeared in recent times. Gregor. Yeah, we're targeting a small number of S gene target failure samples just now, uh, and um, already we've been able to discount some of those because once we've um, gone through the, the process of whole genomic sequencing with them, they've confirmed as either just sporadic cases 
with a mutation of, de of, of um, within the Delta lineage um, that has led to this gene dropout. There's a small number that we've announced today that have been proven to be Omicron. We'll continue to work through those just now. It's not significant numbers that we've identified at all, but it's significant enough for us to be uh, mindful of the fact that there is certainly still the ongoing possibility of background um, community transmission, albeit not widespread, albeit not sustained at this stage, no evidence for that. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, that concludes the questions we had today. So can I thank everybody who's joined us uh, today, the journalists um, and anybody watching at home for your attendance and attention. Today, I'll, I'll end simply by uh, repeating my plea to everybody to use this as an opportunity to up compliance with all the protections in place. We know from past experience they do make a difference. They can stem transmission. Um, they'll make a difference against Delta, uh, but they also will help us curb transmission of this new variant. Uh, I tomorrow will give my usual weekly statement in the Scottish Parliament, so I'll be able to share any further information or knowledge that we get between now and then uh, at that point. But obviously, over the days to come, uh, we will keep you updated uh, as often as appropriate. We will share what information we have about this new variant, the position in Scotland, and any actions that we think are necessary. But to end on a positive note, uh, notwithstanding this latest uh, and worrying development, we're in a much stronger position than we were at the end of last year because of vaccination. So please get vaccinated with every dose that you're eligible for as quickly as you're able to. Make sure you test yourself regularly. That is a, going to be such an important protection, particularly over the festive period. And please do all of the things we know make a difference. Wear your face covering, wash your hands, keep your windows open. Uh, thank you for now, and I am sure I will speak to you again at some point later in the week.